Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of the People's Court Navarra Edition. <laughs> <laughs> dun dun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, or also known as Session 6 of the Dragon Age Ascension or Dragon Age Season 3 tabletop campaign. As you can see, every single one of our players, every single, single one. one. <laughs> <laughs> and I focus the camera on one specific <laughs> Is dressed and ready for the part, dressed appropriately for court today. Well, so. one's un undercover, you know, you can't have everyone just uh, advertising that they're a lawyer. Yes. Um... But before we get into it, uh, let us do the warm-up question, shall we? So, we're going to do a warm-up question that I really enjoy asking uh, periodically, actually, throughout the campaign. And that is, if we were to pause the events of the, of the campaign or of the story in this moment, and it, this does not have to be canon, as, if, as in the person actually has a journal if you don't want them to actually have a journal. Um, but at minimum, hypothetically, if they were to write in a journal... What are some of the things, thoughts, feelings that you have on said journal? Um, per hopefully, um, some tidbits that may not come out of normal conversation or normal RP. Um, I'm sure in terms of Leon's, it is just Tyrion's name several times <laughs> circled with hearts. Tyrion, 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 heart, heart, leaf, leaf, heart, leaf, Tyrion, Tyrion, Tyrion. But besides that, <laughs> and I also told the players that if they wanted, they can ask me to do the exact same thing for any NPC. It does not have to be a party member, any NPC. So I think I'll save the NPC for last. Who would like to go first? We had all just uh, hit level six, so that is when we choose our specializations and. Uh... And as I told Sam, he can't actually, on paper, he's a blood mage, but he can't actually be a blood mage until it actually plays out in the game. So, so uh, this is the start of Leon, you know, down the dark and dangerous path of being a blood mage. Leon is a little bit, uh, um, well, A, scared is the main uh, emotion because of the dangerous nature of blood magic. And then he's also excited because this is a special type of magic that, you know, no one else typically does. And it is a way to get closer to his parents. Um, a, a feeling of um, shame as well because, uh, you know, the circle has indoctrinated him to be blood magic equals bad. But, um, you know, the I think that excitement is probably the the main emotion, uh, as much as it sort of uh, is holding him back because of how um, dangerous blood magic is and how, um, you know, the circles indoctrinated him, um, as well as, you know, thoughts on the other party members, um, you know, sort of uh, like, growing. Oh, man. Like. So, um, he is... Uh, warming up to a lot of party members, especially Daratham, because, you know, Dar he and Daratham uh, were talking uh, last session about, you know, blood magic, and uh, he's the only one he can really talk to about this specific path. I totally um, have no terrible secrets that I'm holding in. Oh, no, definitely not. Um, and then uh, he's also, you know, warming up to um, Tyrion because, you know, they're roommates right now, and uh, he's known him the longest. And, uh, you know, sort of leery about Pasha because, uh, you know, Pasha has shown a, a, a dislike towards his current profession. Um, but, and then um, doesn't quite have an opinion on, um, on uh, Russo, Russo. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, yes, they have gotten into a fight, um, you know, a dragon fight together, and uh, Russo was willing to, uh, you know, drop his blood onto the circle, you know, because if a mage did it, then it would be blood magic, but if a mage didn't do it, then it's a gray area. So, you know, thankful for uh, Rousseau for that, and also intrigued about this current mystery that we're solving for. Okay. So. 
Yeah, I'd like to uh, go next. He's gonna and for Tyrion, I'm actually going to. He's gonna pull out some papers and documents. He's gonna write down the journal in the first person or t talk to the journal. Day unknown, month unknown. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been two years. It's been many years since. Well, two years since I've been out of Master Armorin's house. And honestly, it's been been pretty interesting. I've had uh, fairly interesting journeys up to this point. Though I've been traveling quite a bit in the Anderfels for quite some time until I eventually met with the circus troupe. That has been quite an experience for a couple of months. Until now, with this whole with the whole event of the dragons and now suddenly being these avatars. This has made me curious to why specifically me, why I specifically name the companions I am with right now, journeying upon. I find this Curious and odd. Is it a sign of one of the gods above, the Maker, or the El or the Elven gods, or something else? <sighs> if only I had studied more. Maybe read a little bit more on the arcane, but it's not my specialty. I'll leave that to the mages. But this this part this party has been interesting to be with. I've got uh, I met Leon again. It's been. <sighs> Ten years since I met the young lad. <laughs> Can't believe it's been that long. He seems though he has gotten to an interesting path though. He's also been a doctor though and said he's went towards a mage path since magic uh, seems to be in his bloodline. Though I have this odd feeling he may be harboring something. Hmm. Maybe maybe it's maybe I'm being paranoid. But it's good to have another ma another one that I know of the same specialty around, at least. It's been quite helpful. And he's been quite helpful as a doctor also around, so... A good man. Gotten a little bit closer to Russo, at least. I've finally understood uh, a little bit about him. I have, though I trust everyone among here, I trust him a little bit more now. <laughs> oh, the idiot me having to say that out loud in front of his boy. Ugh, still makes me embarrassed. Oh, but trust is back, and I think, and I do. I understand 100% what Russo is doing, and I like that he is a caring father. I wish I had that. And he seems to be a good lawyer, also, based on what this job we've been doing upon this case that he's been doing. Pasha is a little bit of a small mystery to me. Do I? It does seem that she is Kun from the way she speaks? So she's seen, though she is strong and level-headed, and sometimes very on the point, it seems that she's hiding something. She's afraid of something. I'm curious to know what that is, though. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I should just have a chat with her at some point after we're all done with this. Maybe. Get to know my patients better, anyway. And then the odd enigma, Dariton. That, I... As much, I have this feeling where there might be some understanding. I feel like the way he moves, the way he speaks, there's some familiarity. I'm curious if, if he's actually to Winter. Maybe. Maybe I'm being paranoid again, or maybe I'm just seeing something else. I should ask him at some point. I do know we're heading out soon, so maybe I'll get to ask him on the road. It's been wild, crazy, I have to say. Hopefully, uh, my, I continue my job. Though I will apologize, I did unfortunately do one break in the entering by accident, but that was only a job that was necessary and had to be done. Hopefully I don't do it again, unless there's need for it. Anyway, I've talked too much, I feel. This is quite enough for now. Let's hope that everything goes well. Report over, turn seat off. Thank you, Skull. Awesome dive into the head of Tyrion. Very, I apologize, very... it took long. <laughs> no, no, no. I had so much processing did you go to. It's a lot of juicy bits. Thank you. Yeah. Who would like to go next? Okay, go ahead, Daratham. This should be All interesting. Right. So, Daratham, I'll say it's like uh, uh, like the night, uh, the evening that we're sleeping before the trial. And uh, Daratham heads in, I believe we're sleeping in the caravan, so 
sets down on the cot and <clears throat> just closes his eyes, lays back down. And then he is in the fade. For a little bit, it's just that kind of uh, distant dream that you don't really see, like something that's you can feel there, but it's not vivid yet until he hears a voice. So, Darithan, you want to talk? And suddenly he feels himself in that same garden where he was in his master's uh, palace, where he was spoke to Balm, and he's sitting on that same bench where they once sat, but where Balm is, is instead Verania. And he appears as his old elven self. And he looks over. <sighs> this is just cruel. <laughs> well, maybe, but I feel like you could use someone to talk to. You're not going to take no for an answer. No, I'm not. <sighs> Fuck. He looks down, sees himself, and closes his eyes, and then in a second. <laughs> Honey, that's not you. This is me. It doesn't matter what I was before. This is me now. And then she puts a hand on the disfigured, clawed form. It wouldn't change anything. <laughs> well, if only this weren't a dream. And he retracts his hand. Oh, where to start? I can think now. That's a... Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I suppose I have to thank the architect and the awakened for that. If anything, well, at least they made me capable of vengeance. Though I think there's one- Yes, yes, Lydia helped me the most, I'm aware. strange being on the surface. I knew the world had changed, but not so much. There's contraptions and flying ships and circles and and more of Balm. I thought Balm was one of a kind, but there's more of him. It's a new world. One that's far grander than Deventer could ever be. If this were Sarah, she'd be uh, ranting about the cookies and the, the sweets and the rides. I think she would have enjoyed that carousel. And Verania lays her head on Daritham's shoulder. He's a little too out of it to push her back. And I have companions now, I suppose. I don't know. I, I have three and one threat. I can tell Russo has some history with the Blight. If anything, I'm almost glad. Should I die, someone else will know about the corruption and the, the filth that is us. He can bring it to light, eradicate them. And me too. He's a lawyer, I suppose he'd like that sense of justice. But he cares for his boy. He's a good man, I can tell. If I had anything to do with his pain, well, there's no apology I can give that'd be enough. Then Pasha, she is a member of this new Kune, the people that Balm are a part of. Though it seems they're more of a... don't know if religion is the right word, maybe cult. It seems to be quite fanatical. But if she's happy with her life, then 
I can't complain. I wasn't exactly an exemplar of free thought. And she seems caring, if not a bit firm. Oh, and I don't understand this whole bias towards blood magic. Like, I understand it's a dangerous tool, but... I still remember the time I had... I saw my master... grow an arm. It was disturbing as fuck, but it worked. And Tyrion, that felt like a hint of home. I can tell he's been punished before. And for such an innocent soul, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Though I feel like it'll be the hardest to give off my story to him. Hopefully I can pull it off. Though then again, perhaps I should tell him, then he can stop trying to heal me with his bandages. And then Leon, the youngest. I can tell he's been through a lot, even for his young age. And his companion in Pyrus is a fascinating one. I never expected to meet a, a talking book from the time of De Winter. And uh, I suppose the best I can do for my fellow mage is give him a new perspective. He's had two extremes in Pyrus and his circles. The best I can do for him is show him that neither is right. It's all gray, and he has to choose for himself. Hmm. I hope he makes better choices than most. And what about the rest of your companions? <clears throat> oh, yes. Dwarven magic, that's a... Uh... That's a new one. I'm uh, curious about that, though Rosie seems a fine enough girl. And Nathan's, uh, what, what was the term Pasha used? Goatlock, Gatlock, I think Gatlock, that was it. They're uh, a bit terrifying with the implications they have, but they get the job done. Nathan is a interesting lad, I feel like. He's quite mature under his youthful exterior. The circus is just a riot. <laughs> Paul, I'll never quite understand the obsession with prune juice. And then there's these powers. I don't know why I'm one who has such powers, and the rest of them are bits, but... Well, don't you remember? Right before the explosion, you had a sting. How did you know that? I'm in your head, remember? You made me. Ah, right. Fucking fade. it. What were they doing? <laughs> Suppose you don't know any better than me. Well then, there's these powers and oh, there's a fucking old god awakened apparently. Oh, that's just a recipe for disaster. We need to head to Ferelden or wherever we're looking for them, and fast. Though these uh, murder mysteries or whatever seem quite important too, there's too much to do. 
though, at least for you, seems you have all the time in the world. Apparently. And he looks at the claws, tightens into a fist. The blood in his dream starts to run down his hand. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> and he's awake. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you. Very nice. So, Pasha kind of does keep a journal, but it's every evening she writes letters. And they're all in QNLAT, so no one would be able to read them anyway. And they say, Dear Dandelion, I can't believe just how easily everyone has accepted these strange circumstances. Dethem and Leon, that's no surprise, they're mages, but Tyrion and Russo, they seem to take it in their stride. I, I find it most disturbing. Under normal circumstances, I would find a fellow Tamazran and speak my thoughts through, but I don't even have a fellow Kunari here to talk about talk about this with. The Kuhn is not believed, it is understood, so that is where I try and find understanding. A seat tal ebb, it is to be. That is the main tenant of the Kuhn, as it were, so... Does that mean these powers were to be? I find that hard to believe. These, it seems too much like magic. But would this would not happen for no reason? But I have no desire to be Cerebas. It's it is confusing. I, it is something I must put to the back of my mind anyway. We have this trial that Russo must complete. It is good to see him work. It is... It warms my heart to see the, the little boy I want to all grown up in his profession. As natural as breathing. Although I must admit I do feel out of my depth. I am not built for this kind of thing. Azra would have known what to do. I simply stumble forwards. And everyone else has been playing their part remarkably well. Uh, Tyrion is a, a sneaky fellow. I don't know what he did inside that building, but the way he climbed down that... Uh, that lattice was beautiful to see. And Dertham, I, I haven't spoken to him much. He does have some rather worrying views on blood magic. Not evil, my eye. Leon revealed that his uh, parents were murdered. That's... He's so young. He's... <laughs> He's, he was just a few years younger than me when uh, when you were taken. And I think the, the ink kind of smudges there as if water has hit it. And she continues on. But he is a, a strong young man, I think. To have faced adversity and to still hold his head high, he seems rather cheerful. But I... I think that is enough for one night. I need to... The trial is tomorrow. I must get some shut eye. Hopefully. Rana. Thank you, Callista. And last but not least, yes, the man that of the leaves day, me, the Mr. Lawyer, Mr. Lawyer, <laughs> let us hear it. 
Let's be oh, good. I'm with curious. <laughs> I imagine that Russo would have wrote this like the one night he would have had in his office. That's about to happen, like before we get to the trial. Sure. And then, like, depending on how he feels at the end, will depend on if he keeps this note or not. <laughs> Uh, well, it seems my time of ignorance, bliss, has ended. I've come so far, yet I feel so far forgotten. Seems mere days ago, all that really mattered was raising Balin Wright, my pride, my joy, my penance. Visible pause. He probably knows the truth at this point, or at the very least that I've lied. I'm gonna have to give him the last memento I kept from the both of them and come clean before this is over, though I don't think I'll ever be ready for it. And if Corrin comes back, well, hopefully I'll be ready. In my travels, it seems I've been reminded of sin of the past, and then surrounded by a bunch of... idiots. Though, five in particular stand out. I have to say, I never thought Pasha would ever re-enter my life again. Something I was most unprepared for. Though, I feel like she expects something out of me, and I don't know what there is to give. Anyone who thinks I'm a good person is just lying to themselves. I don't deserve salvation. <laughs> All I can do is acknowledge it and push forward. I need to talk to her and let her know that the boy she left has died, and now there's just the mistake of a man. Tyrion, I feel distant yet familiar because we share so much, though I think he's learned his lesson about making slanted slayers at my boy. I'm ready to start a new foot with him and push for the best path possible. Leon, he's a bit of an enigma, though I'll keep an eye and touch back. Though, the fact that him and everyone else is so eager to help me out in my problems is telling in of itself. And then Daratham. <laughs> I had my suspicions at the moment I took that hood off. I didn't want to believe it, but I'm not strong enough to deny what's right in front of me. As to whether he's malevolent or not, still aims to be decided. Though, I feel I've gained an upper hand in our interactions. He knows that if he crosses me, I have the cards and could ruin a lot for him, though I don't feel the need to just yet, but I'll keep it as an option. <sighs> then this case, it'll either make me or break me, but given what's happened to Balin and these powers, I don't think it was realistic to think I could just stay home and ignore everything much longer. I'll do the best that I can with the case, with the time that I've given, and hopefully I'll have something to come back to when this is over. And these powers, they're just a tool, nothing more, nothing less. I don't want it around me any further than it has to be, and I'll use it as needed, but I'm not happy about it. And, uh... Mother, if you could ever hear me, just know I've tried. And with that, 
I feel like he'd kind of just tear the note and throw it away. <laughs> real, real quick, I just want to say I love how similar Dareton and Rousseau are by themselves. <laughs> yeah. Mm. For, really for people cool. who are at odds with each other, at least right now, that is interesting to see how similar they actually are. So, uh, the view for the viewers' knowledge, the players have selected and voted for Rosie to be the one uh, who I will uh, portray the journal of. So, here we go. Am I being hunted? Rosie Personas. Dear Diary, oh boy, am I in a pickle. Let me tell you. So, for starters, I'm in a bit of a moral quandary right now because I just don't know what's the right thing to do here. So, I guess I should start with the very first big major thing. Mind-blowingly, we just found the, the Pentaviv Guardian of Fire. It's actually none other than the kid of Rousseau. Well, not biological kid. Obviously, Rousseau adopted him, but I know that I know that my dad and the others have been searching for him for a long time, and I I have this I you know we found him and and it's amazing and 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 but I I was made to promise not to say anything at least. Not at this moment, even though every bit and part of me knows it's really important for at least for the other four to know. I mean, this is one of them. This is technically Aunt Halisair's Halisair soul in there. And I feel like they should have the right to know that. But at the same time, I totally get why they don't want me to say anything because they're afraid of what'll happen to him and I don't I don't want to be the kind of person who wants to take a kid away from their parents I mean I didn't grow up with my parents I get it and I didn't grow up with my mom and I only just recently over the last several years got to really really get to know my dad so I know that too so I just feel really pulled in many different directions and I just don't know what to do but I made a promise and I guess the next time I report back to my dad, I just I can't say anything. Even though it's, I was always really, really awful at at lying to my dad. Really awful at that. But I guess that's just a problem for another time. Also, to report back from last time, so the more I get to know Darthen the less and less he seems to be a butcher to me. Like, I know I was sent out to keep an eye on him and everything, but, I mean, so far, he seems to be, well... He's just not how I pictured him. And I've met a lot of other awakened people, like Razakael, of course, is super cool and, and all that, and I got to talk to the architect for a little bit, and he seemed really cool, and... <sighs> Darethim just... He reminds me... He reminds me a lot about Zachariah, actually. He's just very... I don't know. He just seems kind of to himself, yet thoughtful. And I can tell that he there's a good heart in there somewhere. He just doesn't seem to realize it. I don't know. I've always been very like optimistic about these kind of things. Uh, seeing things through... Uh, rosy glasses. Haha, <laughs> rosy. Well, yeah, I know. But I just feel like growing up, I, I guess from a very young age, I have these, I had, I knew I had these abilities. And even though I was told that I need to keep them a secret, I was also told, taught never to be ashamed of them and never be ashamed of who I was. And yeah, I'm different, not like any other dwarf out there. And yeah, I can understand the reasons to hide my differences. But with Darethim, it just seems like 
I can tell when I look into his eyes, he just, he just feels so sad about things. And it's one of those things I really want to talk to him about and just kind of sort of get into his head, but I don't want to blow my cover or anything because, you know, this is my first real big mission and I don't want to mess things up, which is another reason why I really want to report back this really big thing about the fire guardian, the, the guardian of fire, but I can't. And then for the others, well, Pasha's, I, th I like Pasha a lot. She sort of reminds me of Faith, because Faith was always a great teacher. And I know that Pasha was a, is a teacher, kind of, sort of, in, in, in a way, from what I heard. So, there's that. Now that I mentioned Faith, I wonder how her and Uncle Archer are doing. And their kids. Well, I guess that'll be for another time. Um, who else, who else, who else? Big trial. Uh, Russo seems to be under the, have everything under control. He seems like he's very good at his job. Uh, which is another reason why I don't want to cross him necessarily, because he's got a very big hammer. Um, and then, uh, Tyrion's seems very sweet, and, and Leon seems very sweet. Haven't really had a chance to interact them with much. So I think it's probably because I've been just keeping, like, I've just been paying too much attention to Daratham this whole time. But maybe over time. Oh, oh yeah, and I almost forgot. We have a griffin named Valor. I still think that Valerie is actually a pretty cool name too. But Valor is Valor regardless. That's another thing that I'm not allowed to talk about or to say. But, but it's a griffin. <sighs> well, maybe, maybe one of these days Nathan and I might be able to give it Vince the party to, I guess, start to, start to unravel things for people. Cause this is an amazing discovery. But, I don't know. Not my call. So, anyways, I guess that's it for now. But, um, I guess I'll talk to you later, and maybe by that point I'll have figured out what to do about this whole Guardian situation. Signed, Rosie. Okay. And that's Rosie's sign. So now you know. Yeah, I'm definitely. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> no, I, I I really hope Rosie like comes to talk to me at some point. <laughs> hey, at least not. Hey, the Stephen Crows haven't been hired to kill you. Um. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, let us go back. So let's take it from where we left off. I believe. I believe they just had the revelation about Archon Radonis after yes. talking with Manfred again. Yes, that's right. I was ha I was semi disappointed that when you asked for a journal entry, you didn't want Manfred's journal entry. But we could have asked for Manfred. Yeah, that we could have NPC. Any NPC. I was going to vote NPC. for it. <laughs> we could have cheated. And give us Alcon Radonis's journal. Yeah, <laughs> you could have. I no, 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 no. You could have. No, no. Too give late. Us We've already the picked. old gods journal. The awakened oh. old gods journal. <laughs> yes, that would have been interesting too. No, the dragonflies journal. Love of them. The dragonflies journal. <laughs> the voice that said it was dragon shockers. Mm, I'm gonna bite dead. I believe we we're all going to meet uh, meet up so we can do like the last planning. I believe. Yeah, but yeah, go ahead. Last set. So yes. this is like we meet up on the street. I, this I guess. is the so this is the night before the trial. Is mm -hmm. this okay? So I think that it would be good to set up a. Um, here's the clues we have, just to just to ensure that we have everything on the table. Yeah. That's wise. Yes. So. I agree, but we do uh, need to. I do think we need to uh, finish up some last things. I believe. In terms of finding stuff. Yes. Uh, we still have not talked to Pendrick Karn. Interrogated. Uh, we haven't even interrogated yet. Uh, 
Janice? What's her name again? Guinness? No, I haven't Guinness. visited Guinness or Alger yet. I need to get that in before the trial, for sure. And Looks now like they'll have a late night. Haha. <laughs> yep. Then there was also the Archon is making moves. Which we don't know where they are. Is anyone good at tracking specific humans? Well, we do have two people from where the Radonis used to preside. Nathan will pipe up and say, This might be a long shot, but if we had that clue, I guess, about the gnarled bushes and the wall and whatever, and the place is huge, maybe if we got a bird's eye view of the surrounding areas, we might be able to cover more ground if we wanted to find that spot. So we climb a tower? Mm. Griffin's eye view. Oh no. He says. Mm, as much as I would like, like to use a griffin in this <laughs> night. Uh, yes. It's, it is very dark. And you have to deal with uh, trying to convince uh, Valor to let you ride her. Yeah. Griffins are known for being particular with their riders. They seem. Valor seems to really like Pasha and Rousseau. <laughs> I mean, I don't I, know why, but I've, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I've ridden horses before. If riding a griffin is anything like riding a horse, then... Might be a little different, but the principles I'm assuming are about the same. I've ridden my share of horses as well, but I don't think that I've near had a chance to bond with Valor as much as you have, he says, looking at Pasha. I don't disagree with the idea, it's just I don't want to get Valor in danger. Yes. Very true. I know it's nighttime, but there's a, a uh, griffin flying in the night uh, raises some eyes. True, but let's be real here, Tyrion. Do you think that the griffin is going to be any more danger than he is right under the nose of <laughs> Master Rignaldo? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. Fair point. Touche. So the question is, what do we prioritize from here? Um, let's put all our clues on the table, and then uh, from there, it'll um, we'll see what needs to be more investigating. Also as a re refresher for the viewers. We could also split up. Yeah, I think we, we have to. We have to, I think. Yeah. If, we, if we're going to need the uh, information from, Ga from Guinness and... Uh, Audric. 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 Audric, thank you. We're gonna, we need someone to go there. I think the best person probably for this, I imagine... Was Would Russo. be me. I mean, I'm the only one that has the jurisdiction to go to the jailhouses to see them. Question is, do you want to go alone? Well, I mean, maybe I'd... you can take Rosie with you. She's quite good with uh, throwing things that are very heavy and very dangerous at people. <laughs> oh, I mean, the jailhouse is heavily guarded, and do we really want to expose Rosie if things do go bad? Also, Rosie didn't take, didn't seem too fond of entering the city. She's still outside. She did say it creeped her out. I mean, we might be able to convince her to come in, but... I could go with you if you need a partner. Well, let's... I wouldn't be against taking Leon, but if anyone else needs him, I'm not against the going alone. Let's see what options we other have that we have to investigate. We still need to talk with Karn. Because we need, we do need him on our side, right? For the court. Well, if that last marquee is to be believed, he might be on our side by default if it could hurt the Markhams. Yes, we should probably uh, try to set Pendrick Karn against uh, the Markhams because that would take the biggest uh, pressure off of this case, you know, the um, aristocrats. Because uh, as soon as they, you know, say any opinion, the judge may lean towards their favor. But if the aristocrats start, um, you know, distancing themselves from this case, it'll be much easier. True, hmm. but we can only distance so much when the aristocrat's the one that made the original marquee. Yeah. To the point where they can't buy their way out of it. Yeah. And then we have the tip about Radonis. 
find too mentioned of this gnarled oak thing. If you, if we want to search for Archon Rodonis, I, we could have some, maybe at least two. Nathan says you're talking about looking for a, an Archon, though. <laughs> Probably one of the most powerful mages anyone has come up against. Looking, not fighting. Looking, we don't want to fight. <laughs> even, even I have to think secondly to go fight an Archon. We just need to find where he is, and then we we'll see from there. I think it's out of the question if it's just going to be two people. True, but it might you might not have a choice if he finds you first. <laughs> well, there's not really much we can do about that. Or if it's we could agent. find where he's been hiding, that would be more valuable. If we can connect him to the Ar- if we can just connect him to the Marquis, that no one voids most everything they even want to argue in the first place. True. We'd have to bring witnesses, or at least someone reliable that can say the Archon is attached, though. Well, Manfred, I could call him as a witness, and he said he's seen him with Markham. As well as uh, uh, Tom Rainier, though he could not identify. He gave a vague description. We didn't know it was the Archon until we matched both of our informations. But perhaps Manfred and Tom Rainier are together. I wonder how Manfred knew about that. He said that uh, Radonis was with Janus. True, it's more... It's more I'm more, more curious of how he uh, saw it. That, uh, maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's paranoia catching up to me. <laughs> well, at least from my opinion. If the Archon is going to be hiding anywhere, it's going to either be in plain sight, such as in the Markham's estate or some other noble house, mm. or in a more poor section of the city. Though I don't think he could be hiding outside of it. To venture, at least. Uh, higher class defenders aren't known for their love of nature. <laughs> that is true. How about the, if if you need people to go, maybe me and Dariton could take could take care of finding Archon, the Archon. Perhaps take uh, someone else with us, maybe Nathan or Rosie, if we go outside. Mm-hmm. Mm. I agree with that. If you guys are going for the Archon, and if. Just suggesting, if you want Valor involved, maybe it does make sense to bring Pasha with you too. And then that leaves uh, myself and Russo to the jail. But don't forget about Karn. Karn, yeah. Yeah, but who? I mean, we're on, we're on the ends of our time here. I can accompany you if you'd like. I'm not sure how much help I would be, but if you need another body, I can go too. In order to get a um, audience with Karn, um, either we have to send Rousseau to um, sort of lawyer his way in, or if we have someone of noble origin who's willing to claim that they're from noble origin, it would be easier to get an audience. That could work as or well. Or we say something. Uh... So we found something about Marquis, maybe? He does have a very... <laughs> interesting agenda against the team. Hmm. Yeah, didn't they get a restraining order? Yeah. Yeah. It says right here on this document that was uh, copied. It's still in process, though. If, if you could convince him that this trial would aid him in securing the restraining order, then... It was, and it, does, it just has to be Russo. So, I mean, we, we, each of us are working with, under him, so... I mean, assistance. I could give you a writ, but the question is if he deems it good enough. Maybe that, uh, that combined with the Marquis and the uh, noble claimant. Oh, and... Don't forget about the Mortalitasi. I don't think that we could get access to her at all. No. 
Wait. Well, the problem would be we'd spread too thin. Realistically, we have time for one more split up run, and then mm-hmm. we have time to sleep, and then it's the trial. And we have to prepare for it at least. I think well, for now we can we can say the mortality can be ignored. For now. At least for now. Let's peg down uh, who has to go where. So, for example, um, uh, Rousseau has to go to the jail to talk to yes. uh, Guinness and Audric. Yes. So that's He's the only one person. Has to it. Yes. Um, if we want someone, to use the... If someone has to go to Pendrick. Yes. Um, I could try to talk to Pendrick, but I don't know how much help I would be in securing, well, being able to see him, first of all. I think, I think you might be able to. Pasha might be the best at talking. If if you need someone to talk their way inside a building, I can't say I'll be gentle about it, but I can probably get you in there. So, uh, good cop, bad cop? Uh, let, let's go for nice cop, stern cop. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And then maybe Nathan can accompany you. Mm-hmm. Um, as our ace in the hole, if you really will not talk to us. If you'd be alright. I'm fine with that. And then would we have time to at least try to find a document exposing the Radonis' presence here? I mean, not talk, just try to find any more information to link him to this. I suppose, uh, as you said, me, Tyrion, and maybe Rosie can handle that. Mm-hmm. Um, what you could do, this is a potential idea, is if you see about where the Archon should be, maybe grab like a city guard, because if you can get someone reliable to say, yes, the Archon is here, um, it'll lend credence to the case more than just uh, Rousseau's sort of uh, assistant saying, yeah, he's here. Valid. Mm. But a city guard may spook the Archon. Mm. Well, so the question is, where even they believe us? We'd need something in writing or a testimony. Do you wish for me to do what I did again at the Mark at uh, the Markham's house? I won't ask you to pointlessly risk yourself for my gains, Darren. As much as I don't, as much as I've already done one crime in this city. I'm not saying I, I would like to do the second one, but if it is necessary to the case and could give us something against Radonis, and don't think of me as I don't, I don't like Radonis, I hate him as much as any other Magister. Magisters are very powerful, Terran. Don't, don't. Oh, want... I know. Oh, I know. I know Magisters are dangerous. Some of the most but dangerous I'm... creatures on this world. <laughs> so it's decided then? Nathan asks. I guess. That's right. the best option I think we have. Well, I guess good luck, everyone. All right, let's do it. Good luck, all of you. You guys will make your way to the estate of uh, of Pen- of Karin Pendrick, and um, I'm going to say that it's later. It is, again, it's later in the day. So, um, it's a grand, there is another grand gate, um, and it's probably somebody at the gate that you have to ask for entrance. So, we'll say it's a, a female um, guardswoman, and she, once again, she, when you guys get arrive there, she will ask, State your business. We come with information that we wish to discuss with Lord Khan. It could positively affect the outcome of his marquee against a, a Lord Janus Markham. When you say uh, Janus Markham's name, the guard will nod and say, I see. Wait one moment. And um, she, will, she will go inside and emerge once again moments later. And she says, the master will see you. However, he told me that you have 15 minutes to provide whatever information you have. Okay. My master's time is very valuable. 
So, the gates will open and, and somebody will escort you into the estate itself. And I'm going to say that um, Penrick Carn's estate is, like I said, it is uh, very rich and aristocratic, but um, noticeably uh, the other duke, Duke Janus van Markham, is, is far more like upper class. Mm -hmm. Ostentatious. Um, more ost yes, correct. And um, uh, they will take you over into some sort of like study, I think. Maybe there's like a fireplace uh, in this study. So it's, it's a very nice um, room. And uh, there will be a uh, middle-aged man with slightly graying hairs sitting at a, at a, a chair in the study and he's got like a, a pipe that he is he is blowing into right now as you arrive and um, when he dismisses your escort he will say please have a seat I've been told that you have very important information for me concerning one Duke Janus van Markham Yes, we're currently um, part of a uh, legal team uh, prosecuting a case that involves uh, um, Lord Markham. A legal case against Lord Markham? Well, he's tangentially um, uh, um, attached, exactly. and and in order to and if this case were to go well, it may cause some. Um, interesting uh, blights onto his reputation. As soon as you do that, a little bit of a sneer um, curls onto uh, the Duke's face. And he says, Really now? You don't say? Huh. Janice. I didn't realize that you would get yourself into such a predicament. What exactly can I do to help? We were hoping that you would provide some uh, sort of character witness on Luke Janus's character. Oh, absolutely. The man is a cad. He's a con. He is the scum of the earth. He, the own, he grew up with a silver spoon in his mouth and his... And he just keeps he just goes on and on and on, probably for for a good like thirty seconds further about how terrible and awful this man is and how 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 much you you can tell he 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 not like this guy like he he not like this guy at all and Nathan just kind of looking at the two of you like oh wow okay tell us how you really feel man is is with the look on his face I think Pasha's gonna try and raise her hand just to get his attention. And uh, my Lord Khan, as you have a, a pending marquee against Lord Van Markham, I, I don't... How... Well, he actually looks a little shocked when you say that, because yep. he, he actually will, will, will... I mean, you can keep talking over him. Yep. But he looks like he's about... He wanted to say something. Um, she, she continues. <laughs> Just, I don't suppose you would have... I don't know, maybe set any kind of watch on Lord Van Markham to maybe try and catch him doing something not so legal, shall we say? I have, before I answer that, you know about a marquee against Duke Janus? A pending marquis we heard that he had been attacking your family members and servants in a rather unscrupulous manner what what a terrible gentleman that is something that i had written up in confidence with with someone how how is it that you came upon this information unless unless you were doing an investigation against myself as well we were looking through the uh, Marquis documents as uh, Lord um, Mark uh, Markham uh, 
also had a marquee that uh, went against our current client, which got him into a, an attempted murder against his life. Um, we pull out both the documents, his uh, restraining order and uh, the uh, marquee against our client. He'll take a look at the documents. Yes, that does seem like something he would do. He'll hand the documents back to you. Very well, continue. What was the question you were asking me? Did you have anyone maybe keeping an eye on Lord Markham to try and gain evidence to support your Marquis? It's funny you ask me that question. No, I have not. Though I have definitely, the thought had certainly crossed my mind. I just hadn't been able to gather the resources to do so yet. Would you know of, um, we uh, we wish to get into contact with one of uh, Lord Markham's, he seems to be a contact. We aren't entirely sure of his identity. He's a, a six foot gentleman, Tavinta, long beard, and he seems to have some sort of walking stick. Uh, would you know this gentleman? Tavinta? I can't recall I've ever seen someone from Tavinta hanging around anywhere, really, as of late. No, I can't say that I have. If we were to get some information and maybe a character witness saying that they were together, it could blemish his reputation irreparably. Oh, well, in that case, you know, I, I think I actually did remember. Yes, yes, it was um, last Tuesday. Oh, I saw this. Uh, five, you said six, six foot, foot. Five foot, six <laughs> foot man with the goatee and beady red eyes. Yes, they were doing something very unscrupulous indeed. And some of our sources point to him maybe being an archon. That's exactly, you know, now that I think about it, he did look like an archon to me. Yes, with the big giant robes and everything. Specifically, oh, what's that Archon out of character? The Archon's name? Radonis. Radonis? Radonis. 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 Um, Radonis. Pasha's just kind of looking like, oh no. He, as soon as you say that name, the guy, the, he actually gets pulls it back as if, as if to suggest, oh wait, wait. What did I just step into? I don't know if I want to be involved with something like like an ex-archon of Tevinter. So he, he pulls back a little bit. I think Pasha kind of puts a hand on Leon's arm and says, Sir, that, that will not be necessary. Simply a character witness to state that this man has been ordering attacks on your family and your servants and is generally not a reputable person, someone who is prone to lying to falsifying Marquis, that would be more than enough, sir. That would be, I would desire nothing else but to show the entire city what a sham of a man that that person is. But if this Archon Radonis was involved in some way, I'm not really sure if I'm willing to stick my neck out if, in case there was some repercussions from this. Can I try and make a persuasion check? Yes, what are you going to, what will you say? She says, Sir, a man was almost murdered on the word of Lord Janus. For the, the common people of Navarra, there must be repercussions and surely doing the right thing and also besmirching the name of your rival, surely, surely that is worthwhile. And yes, roll a communication persuasion. Could I help by adding some information or? Uh, I suppose you can try, yes, go ahead. Um, and think about how the common folk would, the uh, reputation of, uh, Mark, of uh, Lord Markham would turn as the common folk start seeing him as the villain he actually is. Eventually, maybe the common folk may also help you uh, win over more of their support so that 
he maybe will be driven out of town if the common roll me a communication persuasion but take a disadvantage because you were the one who mentioned Archon Rodotus yeah. to him in the first place so take the lesser of the two rolls please uh, bop, bop. okay mm. all right so, so the lowest is 15 15 yeah yeah all right so we'll bump up the 11 to like 13 